Hi, this is Marius. Um, me and my wife noticed lately that there is a lot of confusion about the role of women in the church and whether they can actually take up leadership in the church. Now, me and my wife firmly believe that any woman can take up any of the fivefold ministries and be a leader in the church. And please listen to the following message because that will clear up any questions or confusions that you might have. Thank you. Hi, I am Linda. I am married to Marius, whose voice you just heard. And I am going to speak to you about women leadership in our churches and hopefully clear up any confusion and misunderstanding and lies and attacks which the enemy is bringing against the end time church in trying to prevent the message of the gospel to be preached in the end times as the enemy knows that the return of our Lord Jesus is very, very near. And this is a direct attack from the enemy on the end time church so that the great command which was given by Jesus to all people, both men and women, to go out and preach the gospel to all creation can be stopped. Now, let's look at what the Bible really says about women preachers and women in leadership in ministry and not what people interpret it to be. Let's start with Ephesians 4 verse 11. Ephesians 4 verse 11 says that Christ himself gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, note that these titles were not only attributed to men. They were attributed to the whole body of Christ, the entire church, both men and women. Did you know that the title pastor only appears once in the entire Bible? Except for this verse, the title pastor has never been used in the Bible to describe anybody in church leadership. So we cannot place it above the other leadership roles, as it is not more important than any other leadership role in the church. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28, which is a similar scripture to Ephesians 4 verse 11, pastors are not even mentioned as a leadership role in the church. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 12, starting from verse 28. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. The Lord is here listing the leadership roles in the church in sequence of importance and as you can see the role of a pastor is not even mentioned here in 1 corinthians 14 verse 1 paul considers the ability to prophesy as being the most desirable of all the spiritual gifts and he regards the ministry of prophets as very important and influential. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. Verse 5 I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. For prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues. So Paul lists apostles and prophets before teachers and pastors in the list of ministering leadership roles. Now the reason I mention this 
is because the argument whether women can be preachers in the church or not usually goes around whether a woman can be a pastor or a preacher or not. And the role of the pastor is not even mentioned here. So we cannot place it above the other leadership roles in the church. And we cannot say that the Bible teaches that women are not allowed to be pastors or preachers. Of course, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Therefore, we must also use and read the whole Bible in context and also use other passages to help us interpret verses which may seem sexist or ambiguous. And also in Mark 16 verse 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This command was given to everybody, both men and women. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither male or female, for you are all one. In Christ Jesus. This means that there is no distinction between male and female in the kingdom of God. There is no distinction between male and female when it comes to the kingdom work of God. In ministry work, male and female is equal in the sight of our Lord. And just to further confirm this, men are also called the bride of Christ in the Bible. As Revelation 19 verse 7 and 8 says, Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Let us give him glory and honor, for the marriage of the Lamb has come at last, and his bride, the redeemed, that is us, the church, both men and women, has prepared herself, for she has been permitted to dress in fine linen, dazzling white and clean, for the fine linen signifies the righteous acts of the saints, the godly character of the believers. And women are also called the sons of God in the Bible. Romans 8 verses 15 to 17 For you have not received the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then his, his of God, and follow his with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Again, the Bible is talking here about both men and women. And in Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11, women are also called brethren. Let's read it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The armor of God was given to all believers, both men and women. In spite of a very male-dominant era and culture, there were many women leaders in the Bible. I am going to list only a few for the purpose of this teaching, but there are many, many more. But for now, let's just have a look at some of these women in the Bible who occupied the same leadership roles as their male counterparts. Let's start with Junia, who Paul himself says was an apostle of note among the apostles. Paul speaks with very high regard about Junia. 
and says that she was one of the best apostles of those days amongst all the apostles which were mainly men. Then let's look at Phoebe who was a deacon in the church. And by the way, one of the Greek words for deacon is pastor. Look at Deborah. She was not only a prophet, but a judge of Israel. She was one of the top leaders of Israel who held court over both the men and the women of the nation of Israel. And the Lord also gave the victory over Sisera to Deborah, which is a woman, and told Barak, which is a man, that the honor of the victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. Let's not forget about Miriam, who was one of the leaders of Israel together with Moses and Aaron. And the Lord himself appointed her to lead the nation. Queen Esther was a fearless leader who risked her own life to save the lives of her people. Mary Magdalene was the first person to see the risen Lord, and she was also the first person who Jesus gave the message of hope and sent her out to preach the gospel to men. She was the first woman who taught men about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she was sent out to do that by the Lord himself. We can also say that Mary Magdalene was the very first apostle appointed by the Lord Jesus after his resurrection. Because in the Greek, the word apostle literally means one who is sent off to convey a message. Nympha hosted a church in her home and was a house church leader. And remember that after the resurrection of Christ, most churches were held in houses. Priscilla was a great teacher. She didn't only teach a man, she taught him inside of the synagogue. And let us not forget the warring woman of Zion who proclaimed the word of the Lord with power in Psalm 68, 11. Then in Philippians 4, Paul talks about two women, Yodia and Sintich, who preached the gospel together with him. Anna was in the house of the Lord constantly, and she prophesied over Jesus, and she taught in front of men and women also inside of the church house. And then, as we also, of course, know that there were lots of women prophets also in the Bible. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 5, that women can be in a place of leadership within the church. Let's read it. Every woman who prays or proclaims God's message in public worship with nothing on her head disgraces her husband. Here Paul says that women can pray and proclaim God's message in public worship in churches. Other versions say every woman who prays and prophesies or any woman who in a place of leadership within the church. There were just certain rules and customs which the people of those days had to follow, like, for instance, women covering their heads when they speak or prophesy in public church, or that women were not allowed to interrupt or disrupt a church service. And that is also the main reason why Paul told the women of that specific church in Corinth to not speak in church, but to keep silent. It was not because women were not allowed to speak at all and not to have a voice at all. It was because the church service became chaos 
with all the women speaking over each other and speaking over the pastor. That is what that passage in the Bible is all about. And that is why Paul brought in that rule into that church that day. Paul made that specific rule for that specific church. That was not a set rule made by God for everybody, for all churches and all women. Paul made that rule that day for that specific church and he did it to establish some form of order because of all the chaos that was going on in that church that day. This section is not focused on marriage or on the role of women in the church, but on proper attitudes of reverence and conduct in public worship. Paul's discussion here would have made obvious sense within the cultural standards of the Corinthians. This means that the Corinthians, the people of that area and of that era, had certain cultural standards that they had to adhere to. It is a continuation of Paul's teaching that if our conduct offends and divides the church, we are to change it and change our, our ways in order to promote unity among believers. The Bible tells us to search out the scriptures, not to take one verse and make our own conclusions. And unfortunately, there are people who don't know the scriptures, who do not know their Bible, and who do not read the Bible in context, or on the other hand, you also just get the total prideful and arrogant ones who just on purpose preach a false message because it suits their evil desires. But whatever the case may be, these people take this passage totally out of context and twist and turns it to mean something totally different than what it actually really means. 2 Peter 3.16 says that some of Paul's comments are hard to understand and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different just as they do with other parts of scripture. Nowhere in the Bible did the Lord ever have a problem with a woman leader and nowhere in the Bible did the Lord ever have a problem with a woman taking leadership or getting the honor for being a leader. Nowhere in the Bible does God restrict women to be in any sort of leadership role. The reason why women were restricted and prevented from occupying leadership roles in the church in those days was because of the male dominant culture of that era. In that culture, it was the man made customs and the man made rules, regulations, and laws of those people who restricted women from taking up leadership positions within the church. It was never a command of God. It was never a restriction from God. It was the man-made customs of a male dominant culture of those days which caused women not to be treated fairly or equal when it came to spiritual matters or spiritual functions and roles within the church. It was also worse in certain areas than in others, depending on the different cultures and the different traditional beliefs of that specific area. Just the same as it is still today in certain areas and in certain cultures and traditions in certain parts of the world where the women of a certain country or culture get oppressed by a male-dominant leadership. 
and where the man made laws of that specific country prevents women from having a voice and the women get treated as second hand citizens. That was never God's intent and that was never a command from God that women should be treated as second hand citizens. Jesus showed the Jewish men that a woman had exactly the same stand, privileges and honor in his eyes as the men and that in the eyes of Jesus there is no distinction between men and women when it comes to the things of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is neither male nor female for you who believe are all one in Christ Jesus. No one can claim a spiritual superiority. Galatians 3.28 It was always God's will for women to occupy leadership roles within the church. The reason why women never had the opportunity to occupy leadership roles within the church was because they were oppressed by the male dominant system of that era and of those certain areas and cultures. There is no biblical teaching about oppression of women being a command of God, but there was a lot of teaching in the Mishnah, the man-made oral law of the Jewish people. Jesus came and turned this system of oppression and second-hand treatment of women upside down. Jesus treated women as equals and did not judge them on the basis of their gender. Jesus focused more on their relationship or lack thereof to God and not on their gender. Jesus broke all the man-made cultural laws of the Jews regarding women and he showed them that he does not agree with nor will he obey the laws of women oppression. And he did this when he spoke to women in public, was friends with a woman, touched a woman and vindicated a woman when the Jewish men wanted to stone her to death for adultery. In John 4, we notice how Jesus' male disciples felt about all of this when they were surprised and shocked that Jesus is speaking with a woman. Let's read it. John 4, verse 27. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? And Jesus not only spoke to women but addressed them in a caring manner, often calling them daughters or daughters of Abraham, recognizing their place as descendants of Abraham. He also treated them fairly in regards to divorce and lust, admonishing the men in the audience not to treat women as objects to be lusted after or discarded. Jesus treated everyone the same, setting the example of how both men and women are equal in the faith, as God meant it to be from the beginning. Jesus also did not assert that women were not allowed to learn about the faith and to be students of the faith as it was with the Torah, but he encouraged them to learn as his disciples and witness publicly to their faith. This was revolutionary as there were no rabbis at that time with female disciples or female students. As a result of Jesus' teaching, women could now minister and worship alongside men without 
discrimination. Jesus' teaching gave women equal status with men. And that is also why so many more women rose up in church leadership after the resurrection of Christ than before. Let's look at Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit fell on both men and women who were in the upper room. On that day of Pentecost, Peter confirmed that that time had come where the Lord poured out his Spirit on all people, both men and women, on his sons and his daughters, everyone who was in that upper room that day whether male or female, received the Holy Spirit that day. So any daughter of God has the full rights and privileges to declare, preach, teach, testify to, and prophesy the Word of God. People, what you must understand is that there are different rules and laws in the Spirit and different rules and laws in the natural which were set by God. In a physical marriage, in the natural, there are different roles for the wife and the husband. The wife has her role in the marriage and the husband has his role in the marriage. But in the spirit, in ministry, in the faith, in the things of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the kingdom of God, there is no distinction between male and female and their roles and what they can do for the kingdom of God and the work they can do for the kingdom of God. The Bible makes this very clear. There is no male nor female when it comes to the kingdom of God and the things of the Spirit. I don't know how people can confuse this. It is the uneducated mind and sometimes just arrogancy who receives this false teaching from the enemy and then teaches and conveys it to God's children as truth. The devil is a liar. It is people who don't know the scriptures, people with a lack of knowledge who preach and teach this nonsense that women are not allowed in leadership roles within the church. The Bible says that if you don't know God, you will also not know the things of God. The Bible says that if you don't have the Spirit of God, you will also not understand the things of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14 and the Bible also says that we must not be haste to become teachers, as teachers will get a double judgment and a double punishment from the Lord if they don't teach the true gospel. James 3.1 The Word of God also says that if anyone adds or takes away from his word, that his name will be blotted out. From the book of life. Revelation 22 19. Christian family, please listen to me. There are many counterfeit Holy Spirits doing the rounds in our churches. That is why the Word of God tells us to test the spirits to see if they are from God. 1 John 4 verse 1. Because there are a counterfeit Holy Spirit within some of our churches, a demonic spirit which pretends to be the Holy Spirit, which mimics the work of the Holy Spirit and work through people to deceive the Lord's sheep. Be awake and be aware and be careful of falling prey to the spirit of divination which once to stop the work of God by preventing women from going out and do the one command the Lord Jesus Christ gave us all and that is to go out and preach the gospel. 
The Bible teaches us not to get thrown back and forth by every wind of false teaching, but to know what the Scripture says and to seek the Scriptures out for yourselves so that we don't get thrown around back and forth by the wind of every false teaching. Ephesians 4.14 the Bible is very clear that women can occupy any of the fivefold ministry leadership positions within the church, within the kingdom of our Lord. To all the women who are called by the Lord to occupy any of the fivefold ministry leadership positions within the church, I bless you to arise into your place of biblically based leadership for women and without apologizing for the leadership position God has called you to be in. You are only accountable to the Lord. You do not need to explain yourself to anybody. You answer only to the Lord. You do not answer to men. And every tongue which rises up in judgment against any female in leadership position in the church. I condemn now in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 54, 17.